You know, red card. I've never seen that. Paul Rushing, head trainer, red card. Have you seen that, Mo? Did he just get a red card? I've never seen that. Welcome back to another edition of Instant Replay presented by Cheez-Its. I'm your guy, Charlie Davies, and of course I'm joined with Andrew. Oh, hold up, hold up. No, not Andrew Weeby. I'm here with the OG, Kalen Carr. Welcome, Kalen Carr, to his first ever episode of Instant Replay. Kalen, are you ready? I got my helmet on, Chuck. Let's do this. We're going to start off in the city of brotherly love. Although there wasn't much love in this one, it's the big rivalry, Philadelphia Union versus New York City FC, and we're in the 76th minute. The Philadelphia Union are up 1-0. The play ends up with Julian Carranza falling to the ground after Maxime Cheneau's forearm appears to make contact with his head. Now, Philadelphia Union's head athletic trainer, Paul Rushing, runs out, and he sees that Nicholas Acevedo of New York City FC is trying to pull on Julian Carranza, tell him to get up because they're down a goal. Paul Rushing doesn't like the contact and pushes him back, which then follows up with another push. And then it's everybody up. It's a big brawl. Everyone's fighting. You see this over here. Jose Martinez and Malde Admanson as well are going after it. What do you make of this situation? Do you agree with this red card, Caleb? Chuck, when I saw Glessness put rushing in a bear hug I was like wow this is really MLS after dark energy right now but uh, yes I do have to agree with the red card you cannot put your hands on a player I do think there is a special responsibility or an extra responsibility to be staff allowed onto the field and I do think rushing was there to do his job to protect his players um, and I would imagine that the players would sort of respect him for stepping up in that sense and sort of trying to defend them that said, you can't do it. You can't put your hands on a player from the opposing team. That's why, because afterwards, it just ended up escalating from there, and it could have turned into something maybe worse than it was. So I, I would say, yeah, red card deserved a kind of bizarre scene that you almost never see. Jim Curtin said on the post-game presser, I'd put our training staff up against anyone. Looks like a bunch of MMA fighters that we have on the sideline. Polly saw one of our guys get pushed, and he reacted. No problem with that. The fans didn't have a problem either. He was celebrated on the way out. Uh, a strange situation, but I think one uh, that you can understand from maybe a number of different perspectives. Well, well, you're spot on because he's the head athletic trainer. The player just had a blow to the head. You're worried about concussion. So you want to protect the player and you're not going to allow a, a, an opposing player to start pulling him up off the ground if there could be a serious injury. So I do get the the stress and the pressure in that situation. But like you said, Kalen, you can't touch the players. It's a rightful red card. And hopefully Paul Russian is back on the sidelines sooner than later. And we're going to stick with the same match. In the 86th minute, New York City FC are pushing for that equalizer. Anton Tinnerholm gets the overlap and crosses it, goes out of bounds. But wait, look at what Anton Tinnerholm is doing. He's saying it's a handball. No, it's not. Look at Kai Wagner. It hit my head. It didn't touch my hand. Armando Villarreal stops play. He waits for his AR to make a decision, and he awards a penalty kick. Kalen, do you agree with this call? I do. I think the AR seemed to express that he didn't see it, but Villarreal ends up calling it himself. And if you look back at it closely, you can see that Kai Wagner's arm does come across his body in front of his head in an unnatural position extended away from his body. And it's always a little bit of a tell when a guy points to his head sometimes in this situation. We head to the 96th minute. The Union are 1-1 with New York City, and they're pushing. They have a throw-in. It's a long throw-in into the box. It pops out. Jose Martinez makes contact. It deflects, and it goes in. Yeah, we've won. But hold up. No, no. The whistle has been blown for offside. They go through the play. They go monitor Jorge Gonzalez. He signals to Armando Villarreal to take a second look. He goes to VAR and overturns the play and gives a goal for Corey Burke who the ball deflects off of into the net. Kalen Carr, do you agree with the call? Yes. At first, it did look like it could have gone off anybody, and I think that was part of the reason that the flag went up. 
Once you are able to have the benefit of video review and you see that it hits Corey Burke instead of one of the more advanced players that were in an offside position, you then understand, yes, the correct call and the clear and obvious decision is that Corey Burke was onside when the ball was struck. It then hit him on the leg and then deflected into the goal. So I think this goal should stand. The other thing to add, Chuck, is that there are two other players in an offside position, uh, Gazdag yeah. and Carranza. But in my opinion, neither of them are affecting the line of vision for Sean Johnson. You're spot on. As you can see, Gazdag, Carranza, and Flock, who could possibly not be in an offside position, are not in the line of sight for Sean Johnson. This goal was as good as gold. And I got to give a shout out to that officiating crew of Jorge Gonzalez and the VAR booth and Armando Villarreal for getting this one right. And now we head to the hundredth minute in this game. As if things couldn't get any more wild. Philadelphia Union go down. Corey Burke has a wide open chance and he doesn't convert. The ball comes back down and now New York City FC are getting into the box. There's an opportunity. Tati Castellanos does a little flick and it, it appears to come off the hand of Nathan Harrell. But Armando Villarreal keeps the whistle out of his mouth. Kalen Carr, it's absurd what's happening in this game. Do you agree with the call on the field? I think the referee Villarreal did a really good job here of not ending the match beforehand to be able to at least take a minute to look at this because it is very difficult to see and the game was chaos at the very end. I think Harriel and Tati Castellanos are both in a very good jostling for position. Both have a right to go for the ball. Tati wins it in the sense, the distance between where the ball comes off Tati's foot to Harriel's hand, which to me is in a natural position. And that's the key here. He's jostling for position. So he needs to be able to have his arm out. So does Tati, they both do. And in this case, I think the ball Hits his hand, yes, it clearly makes contact. But I think based on his hand being in a natural position, in my opinion, this was the right call to make. Kalen, there are a number of factors in this play when you're watching it. And it's that quick boot, like you said, Tati Castellanos trying to do the flick in the last second. But Nathan Harrell's arm was already there in that position. It didn't, go, didn't move towards the ball. It didn't extend away from the ball. The hand was in a natural position, and from that short distance, I thought that would have been extremely harsh to be called. And I want to give another shout out to Armando Villarreal for handling this call well. We head to Rio Tinto Stadium, where RSL are hosting the Columbus Crew. It's nil-nil, and we're in the first minute of stoppage time, when Jasper Loffelson takes a long touch. Now he's going into a 50-50 challenge with Columbus Crew Sean Zawatsky. Lovelson wins the ball, but he also makes a lot of contact with Sean Zawatsky. It looks serious. They take a look, and Jasper Lovelson gets a yellow card. But a lot of people were saying that this had red card written all over it. Kalen Carr, what do you think about this challenge? His touch does take him long, but he also finds the pass to Saverino. So there is a controlled nature of the tackle, in a sense, to actually play the ball out of it. That said, it does expose Zawatsky, the player tackled, to some danger. And I think the carry through of it, he knew was going to put himself in a dangerous position. And you could have seen the player get injured. I think yellow card is the right call in this case. Galen, I'm going to have to agree with you here because this is not excessive force. This is not an instance where Jasper Lawson has his studs exposed. This is a reckless challenge in my opinion, and I think they did, the crew did a good job of getting this one right. We head to the Pacific Northwest where the Portland Timbers are hosting the Colorado Rapids. It's the 54th minute, and Bill Tuiloba launches a long ball over the top for Timbers striker Nias Goda. Nias Goda brings it down beautifully and scores to make it 2-0 for the Timbers. But wait. Did he bring it down with his arm? Kalen, what do you think about this play? Chuck, I can't even believe, as a former number nine, that you would even be questioning this. This is a beautiful chest trap. Yeah, I know it was close, shoulder, arm, chest. That can become a nebulous position. 
but I think Nia's Goda gets it on the chest in this one. You have to raise your left arm in order to cushion it in this sense. So it's not an unnatural position for me. I couldn't quite see any sort of replay, even to the slowest of slow motions, that the trajectory of the ball begins to change. So for me to overturn it does not meet the threshold for clear and obvious to overturn. Kalen, Kalen, Kalen. You come on the show and all of a sudden you get everything right. What's going on here? Yes, Nishkoda brings it down with his chest area. <laughs> Either way, the handball rule states it's got to be below the armpit or below the sleeve. And in my, in this instance, it's up. It's the, and in this instance, it's the upper arm, upper shoulder area. So this is a great play from Nishkoda to bring it down, and the goal makes it count. They end up winning 3-0. So. Job well done from the Timbers and the officiating crew. Every striker has long shoulders. Well, that's a wrap for week 16 of Instant Replay presented by Cheez-Its. I'm your guy, Charlie Davies. And remember, if you see something, say something. See you next time.